Now, the best way I've ever learned to define the difference between the three types of system, ordered systems, complex systems, and chaotic systems, is to start to think about how we would use those approaches to manage a day-to-day -day problem. So imagine, if you can, that tomorrow you have to organize a party for a bunch of nine-year-old children. Everybody can imagine that. Yeah. Um, and you're making the mistake of holding it in your own house. You learn not to do this as you actually have more than one child, right? The advantage of community centers is they have fire hoses. Fire hoses are very useful for cleaning up after a party, and they're occasionally necessary for crowd control during the party itself. So let's imagine how we would organize a party based on what assumption we make about the type of system. If we assume that the system is chaotic, then it means the children are acting without constraint. Their behavior is random. So they'll probably discover drugs and alcohol and go on a personal experience of self-discovery. Your house may burn down in the process, but it was socially constructed in the first place, so why are you worried about it? I have a friend in California who did try this once. Yeah, he's never going to do it again. The recovery cost was too high. <laughs> the order systems approach, on the other hand, is taught in all good management schools and all good business consultancy outfits. Under this, it's of critical importance to agree learning objectives to the party in advance of the party itself. The learning objectives should be aligned with the mission statement for education in the society to which you belong and should be clearly articulated and printed off on motivational posters with pictures of eagles soaring over valleys and water dropping into ponds and placed around the walls of the room where you're going to hold the party. As the children come into the party, they should be given Disney playing cards with the party value statement clearly printed on the back. You will, of course, have produced a project plan for the party. The project plan will have clear milestones throughout the party against which you can measure progress against ideal party outcome. And the senior adult will start the party with a motivational DVD. You don't want the children wasting time in play, which isn't aligned with the learning objectives. And then they'll use PowerPoint to demonstrate their personal commitment to the party objectives and show their children how their allowances are linked to the achievement of the milestone targets. <laughs> Following the highly successful completion of the party, you conduct an after-action review, update to your best practice database on party management, and mandate future process improvement. If at this stage, for any remote reason, the children aren't happy, you hire one of the new happiness consultants who will train them to be really very, very happy and God help them if they're not the next time they come to a party. <laughs> the complex systems approach, on the other hand, is much simpler. We start off by drawing a line in the sand, known as a boundary constraint in complexity theory, and we look the children squarely in the eye and say, cross that and you die. <laughs> and one of the things you learn pretty fast as an adult is the value of flexible, negotiable boundaries because rigid boundaries have a habit of breaking catastrophically when you least expect them. We then introduce catalytic probes, a football, a barbecue, a computer game, yeah, any type of thing which will actually trigger a pattern of play which is called an attractor. If it's beneficial, we give it more resources. If it's not beneficial, well, that's where we deploy the fire hoses. <laughs> what we manage is the emergence of beneficial coherence within attractors, within boundaries. And we manage the only three things that you can manage in a complex adaptive system, the boundary conditions, the probes, and the amplification strategy. Management and governance is much simpler when you understand the nature of the system. And you stop trying to teach an ecosystem as if it was an engineering problem when it's an ecological problem. <laughs>